Hello, everyone, and welcome to Custom Report with a Pivot Table training today. I will be covering a little bit of back end setup for report custom reports. And then we'll uh, I'll show you the difference between a view report and a custom report. This is one kind of major difference. And then we'll go into and create a simple custom report and then uh, add a pivot table to that report. So everybody, welcome. All right, so I'm going to go into the back end of the system. I am using custom menus, so I'm showing all apps down there in the bottom right hand corner. Going into admin manager, system setup, and global lists and report groups. These are report groups that I've added to my uh, system, my sandbox. Just by inserting a row, I can create a, a report group name, which is basically a folder to store your, your reports in. And then there's also some security settings around custom reports. So if I go into account information security settings, these are your different security groups, knowing that each group likely has different security rights. But up here in the top right hand corner, you can see where it says traffic project managers, because I highlighted the traffic project manager security group. And if I edit that section, these are the custom report data sets that are in the system and you're able to make these data sets accessible to people in the security group or not or hide them from that security group. As some you know, financial custom reports you may not want everybody to have access to, so you can limit custom report data sets um, using this tool here to show or hide those custom report security groups. So that's it for the, the, the back end setup, creating folders to put your custom reports in and then giving access to the different data sets. So now I'm gonna go over to the report center. So everyone report center. And here you can see the custom uh, report folders that I've created. And you'll notice that there's not as many here as there are groups of folder or folders that I created in that list a moment ago. And that's because you, if you don't have a report in one of your folders, then that, re, that report folder won't show up in this list. Um, but just to give you a quick example, if I want to just show you where going into edit a custom report and in the settings area, this is where I can choose where I, which folder I want this um, to be stored in. It defaults to other reports, but you can see my list of those other report areas, folders that I cre created in that back end setup. But I should have just left that open, sorry. Uh, I'm going back in and editing that to show you the difference between a custom report and a custom view. So I have my custom report open here, and you can see this section here that says group rows together. This allows you to use some uh, or average count, max and min, and then you can roll up your hours worked and, and find the average or the count or the max or the min or sum them, and then they can roll up into uh, groupings by uh, the field that you chose here. But I do wanna point out that unlike a custom report, if I go into a view, like the projects view, and I'll just bring up active projects, and I am gonna hold down the control key on my PC keyboard and left click active projects view, command key on a Mac, I believe, that will open up a separate tab. There we go. And I can run that active projects view in a separate tab. And notice if I modify this view, I don't have that group rows together feature here. So that's really the main difference between a custom view and a custom report is the custom report has that group rows together tool where the view does not have that. 
Okay, so I'm going to back out and I'm going to start a new custom report from scratch. And I'm going to choose one that has a month field that I could use for a pivot table. It's an invoice data set for that purpose. And so I'm going to just type in the search area invoice and it brings up all the purchasing and billing reports that have invoice in, in, in the title. Client invoice level data, this data set is the same as you would get in the views area. There is one row per transaction. So if I choose that data set, this allows me to choose a, uh, a column that has a, a month in it, which is what we'll use for our pivot table. But for this client invoice um, custom report, I'm gonna add a grouping, the client. And then I'm gonna also group below each client, the project for that client. I'm grouping by client name, then project name, and the columns that I want to show a, I'll get that month one in there first, invoice month. Let's see who is the account manager for the client. And what's been billed. Mount build. So I'm grouping by client name and then project name, and then my fields are invoice month, account manager, and amount build. I can arrange these any way I want. I can click on the account manager and drag that up as the first column, and now invoice month is the second column, and then amount build. I'm gonna go into the filters area, add a new filter. I wanna use a date field to um, give a date range on when I want to run uh, this report based on the date range I choose. And so there's many I date created, the due date. I'm going to go with the, the invoice date. I don't want it to be equal to a specific invoice date. I want it to be a range. So I'm changing the condition from equal to to between. And if I chose to, I could hard code January 1st 2021 and then the second value for the date range could be December 31st 2021 or I can check this prompt box and this will prompt the uh, user to input the date range themselves and then in the settings this is where I have my options to which uh, area do I want this in so let's put it in our billing reports folder and you'll see that this private box is checked by default. This means I'm the only one that can see this report unless I uncheck that box. So I'm gonna uncheck private. And now I'm still the owner, but if I chose to make somebody else the owner of this report, I could pick somebody else on my team to be the owner of this report, just creating it on their behalf. But now I'm going to choose which security groups will be able to access report. So I'm gonna, add all of my security groups, except for clients. I'll remove that in a second. And vendors, but you'll notice that I did accidentally add my customized for client group, and I'm gonna remove that from the, the list. So the only people in these security groups will be able to see this report. So I'm going to save my changes here. And now that gives us our client invoice level data. I could go back in and edit this, add additional uh, groupings or columns or filters if I chose to, or there's a couple more features here that I wanna show you on the settings tab. Show search conditions when you run the report. So if I did a date range, it would show at the top of the report the date range that I chose. Do I wanna run this as soon as I open this? Do I want it to run automatically without me having to hit any search buttons? And again, you already know what the private box will do. And down here at the very bottom, you can see that there's the data set that I'm using is the client invoice level data set, orientation is portrait, title alignment is left, 
could align center or right. And you could also switch to landscape uh, orientation. Let's do that. I'm going to apply those changes that I just made. And now I'm going to memorize those changes. Now I have saved what I just modified. I could still run the report without memorizing it, and it would just be like a temporary change. But anytime that you do make a change and you apply changes, that's just temporary until you click that Memorize button on the next page. Let's rename this report. Client invoice level data is the name of the data set. Call this April. 2022 custom report with a pivot. Apply that change, memorize, and now we have the new name for our report. This little thing some people call the hamburger, <laughs> these three little lines. If you click that, that brings up your prompt filters over here on the right, and you can see now we have our invoice date between. I want to just run this report based on 2021 data, backing up to January 1st, 2021, and then running it through December 31st, 2021. Search. And this is what the report would look like. You've got your My Best Buy client with a gigantic invoice test project. And then I've got Best Buy with a new test company, ABC divisions and products. You can see that this is just the typical custom report that you're running based on client and projects with the uh, invoice month and the amount billed. I can hover over that and notice that that single arrow turns into a left right arrow. As soon as it's left right and I'm on that edge, I can click that and expand the size of that column if I need to. But this, you know, you could print this report to PDF if you chose to. And this is, you know, a PDF that you could choose to e email to anybody you want, or you could export it to Excel or create a CSV file for it, and you could copy it to Google Sheet link. But we want a pivot table. So I'm looking at the same custom report. If I go back into the edit mode, notice that I have a pivot option now. And so here's project name, client name. Those are those groupings that we're using. And here's the amount billed, invoice month, and account manager. So these are the fields we're using. And I can either check them all off, and then they'll just be all be used down here in the values, and I can move them around, or if I want to just drag them individually. Let's put uh, amount build. I can hover over that left click and drag that down and amount build. Some of the amount build will be the, the values. Invoice month, I'm going to drag that over to the columns. And then the rows will be, uh, for now, let's just use account manager. Drag that down to the rows. Still working on this filters tool here. You can still use the filters on the re at the report level, but this is still being worked on um, by the engineering team. I wouldn't recommend using the filters on the pit itself. Just use the filters for the custom report tool. Apply my changes. Now I have grid, which is my custom report view, but I also have a pivot option. Now I'm looking at the account manager and which and the amount billed for each month. I can reduce the size of these if I choose to by left clicking and shrinking that. And then you can see the, the full year if I reduce the size of some of those. But knock some of those out. Our grand total over on the right hand side. Might as well do them all. So 
So this is now see now you can see January through December with the grand totals here. I could memorize this right now. I could also print this um, to PDF or export this pivot table to Excel as well. It's recommended that you do both, that you export your custom report to Excel and then you can export your pivot table um, to Excel as well. I'll memorize these changes here. If I wanted to see this differently, I can go back in and edit my pivot table. I could flip flop these if I chose to. And now account manager is across the top. Apply that change. And now you can see January through December with the account manager being the pivot. I can go back in and I could add additional client name down here in the rows, move account manager down there as well and put invoice month back in there and pivot off that, apply that change and this will look a little bit different. So now I have my best buy with the account manager, there isn't an account manager for Best Buy or Walmart, but my new test company has an account manager and so when you twist that down, now you can see that additional information as well. So I want to recap what we did today. Notice in here in the in the billing reports, this is our April 22 custom report with pivot table it is now in that billing reports folder because that's where I moved it from the other reports folder and stored it in the, the billing reports folder. Just as a recap, what we first did was we went into the back end of the system. And then under your global lists, you have your report groups. And this is where you can add any report groups that you want to store your folders in, or your <laughs> any folders you want to store your reports in, sorry. Uh, and then as long as you have a report in that folder, it will show up in your list of uh, folders to uh, choose in your custom report uh, report center. And then I also showed you where to set up each group's access to the various data sets. I also pointed out that there is a difference between a custom view with no grouping rows together and then also our in our report center, looking at our report and editing that, we do have that group rows together option here. This will look more what you would expect. So it is rolling up the amount billed by into our, our account manager and then we are grouping by client and project name. Don't save those changes. I want to thank you for taking the time today to come and investigate how to create a custom report with a pivot table. Thank you very much and have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.